Yo, I'm coming from that 3-6, so that's why I got them brain spinning. Ain't nobody using blinkers, we ain't good at lane switching. Better get a plane ticket, I ain't flying all you chickens though. Always shoot my shot, better swishing off the pick and roll. Dishing off the give and go, all my squad is driven so you can catch us on the road. Promise we ain't doing shows. So Rip City, are you listening? I'm Christian Gamalian, I'm talking with co-host Austin Caphammer, and this is the Peeps and Plaid podcast. The Blazers are 10 and 16 after going 1 and 3 this last week. After some mild optimism that we had last week, that same night Rodney Hood tore his Achilles tendon in a terrible game against the Lakers and he will miss the rest of the season. So praying for a healthy, good recovery for Rodney Hood, hoping he can come back to the Blazers next year. Um, But yet another star is lost for the Blazers who are still trying to turn this uphill battle of a season around. The last week, the Blazers lost to the Lob City Lakers, who were just dunking on them like crazy. Um, in that game, Terry Stotts got ejected for the first time in his career, which was pretty cool. And uh, also not cool because it was required because the refs sucked. Uh, then the Blazers lost a disappointing one to the Thunder. Obviously, first game without Rodney Hood. Um, we'll talk about Chris Paul in a little bit, I think. But the Blazers had their first really good win after losing Rodney Hood, which is good. They beat the Knicks by 28. Uh, so finally a blowout that they should have. Um, and the Blazers then lost a hard fought game against the Nuggets. Not a game you'd expect to win necessarily, but, um, yet again, three pointers were a big deal from the start of the game. Very first possession. I think it was Carmelo sagged off someone hitting a three pointer. And I'm like, really? It's the Nuggets. We should have learned our lesson, but it's his first time with the Blazers playing the Nuggets. So it's whatever. But the Blazers stuck with it all game and fell behind in the fourth quarter. Um, And now the Blazers have only won one game against a team with a winning record, which is rough. So it's been quite a season so far. I'm still holding out hope that with the right trades and the right returns from Nurk and Collins, hopefully this season, that this team can stay afloat and make the playoffs and make some noise. Uh, I'm more so holding out hope for next year to be a championship season, please. Uh, But let's go back to the four games in the last week. What were your thoughts watching those games, Austin? I think that for the Los Angeles Lakers, having uh, Anthony Davis and obviously LeBron James helps, um, but having Anthony Davis and JaVale McGee on the floor at the same time, that's a that's not only a huge front court, that's a very mobile huge front court. There's yes. a lot of – there's a couple front courts in the league that are, you know, big up front. But I – I don't know too many that that really move like that, um, and, and and having a front court that can move like that com- combined with one of the best passers in the in the game's history, that's yeah. just dangerous, man. Yeah, that's so dangerous. And you know, looking at the game, you know, we the first quarter we were down thirty nine thirty four at the end of the first, but then second quarter Blazer is. is so seriously, it's been terrible this year. Second quarter has been terrible for the Blazers. Um, and so they, they scored 38 in the second quarter. And um, we only scored 28, which is, you know, still relatively high. Uh, or, you know. It was a high scoring we, game. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i saying on, on the Blazers part. Yeah. Um, but 38 is just, 38 and 39 is pretty astronomical. <laughs> and they the Lakers definitely, they just stayed there. I mean, third quarter, we pretty much. We're right there with them. 30, 33 for the Lakers, 31 for us in the third, and then 26 in the fourth, and 20 for us in the in the fourth. So, yeah. you know, just second quarter has been killing us this year, man. Um, and let's see here. Kuzma had 15. Obviously, Anthony Davis had the 39, so that's tough. Um, but Kuzma actually looked pretty decent in that game. And then JaVale McGee had 13 points on 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, so that's just effective. That's very effective. Uh, for us, let's see who our leading scorers were again for that game. Um, Dame had 29, pretty decent. Uh, CJ only had 15. I mean, wasn't Rondo just drilling threes too? Didn't I yeah, see he, Rage on Rondo hit two like threes? Like, yeah, back to back like, or something like, one like of them that. Was pretty deep, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, and then obviously we lost Rodney. Um, so that's super tough. I, we'll have to talk, we'll be talking more, uh, about, you know, obviously, uh, trade opportunities here as the Blazers move, uh, into this season, this trading season. Um, but you know, I'm curious to hear more about this disabled player. Um, I don't know what the formal name is for it, Christian. What is it? Does, do you happen uh, to remember? 
disabled player exemption. I'm not uh, sure. Uh, yeah, yes, it's an exemption. That's I think I think you're right. Yeah. Um, I think you, exception. something something. Yeah, something we exception. One of those ex, somethings. Yep. Um, but something I've seen on Twitter, obviously, just in general lately, and, and something I've noticing as I look through some of these stat lines is Nazir Little finishing that game with two points. Um, just can't be not giving him minutes, man. After after we saw how he played earlier in the season, and I think that him and Melo have shown the most hustle this year for our squad. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that Dame or CJ don't show it, but like you can tell those two guys, Melo obviously being away from the game is like, okay, I, you know, I'm, I'm in love with it still and I'm trying to prove my worth here. And then Nods is like, I'm new to the game and I'm a workhorse. And yeah. I, I just, I really like what Nods is doing for us. And I just can't understand those minutes going elsewhere unless it's a part of a trade move in terms of giving some guys that you might want to be shipping off a couple more minutes just to, you know, showcase them a little bit more. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure, but um, and then you know the Thunder. I won't get to quite as much into depth. But the only reason I went so in depth with that one was just because Lakers, like you said, you know it's a that's a matchup that we're going to have to measure ourselves by if we're still going to be maybe obviously not this season, but like you were saying next year a championship contender. You know that's that's going to be you know virtually the same team if not better next year the yeah. Lakers. So. Um, the Knicks, I mean, long story short, they're the Knicks. Dame went, like, how many threes did Dame have? How many threes? I don't know. Let's see here. Let's see. Um, he, I want to say he had at least eight. Um, but Dame had 31. And they just kind of took him out, I think, earlier on. Um, 17 threes for the team. Um, gosh. Let's see here. Well, we'll get back to that. Christian, our statistician, will be... Letting us know how many threes Dame got here in a minute, um, but yeah, so that was that was kind of a rough game. Oh, YouTube advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great uh, game. It was not rough. The Blazers beat the Knicks real well. Well, yeah, rough rough game for the Knicks. <laughs> yes, but, yes. Um, and then the Nuggets here. Let's check this out. Um, this game, yeah, Hassan had thirty three. Um, and then I saw some quote that somebody said, uh, I think his name is Jason Quick, uh, the, the beat reporter, um, had, had quoted Hassan as saying something to the effect of, um, Pinwell Empire had tweeted this, some, something to the effect of Hassan saying, you know, this is a joke if someone's going to say that, like, you know, they're going to trade me for uh, Kevin Love. Like, I got, I, I'm, I'm a way better defensive player than Kevin Love or something like that and just check the stats or something mm-hmm. and it's like. Uh, and, and I think he actually said something in there to the effect of, you know, this is a team that's – we're a team that's struggling defensively. Like, why would you trade me a defensive stalwart for Kevin Love? Yeah. Which, you know, I don't know how much truth there is in that. Um, I think we're about to get Yusef back. And, you know, for all, this, for all the stats we see Hassan put up, we also see some questionable uh, defense at times. Um, but – yeah, I mean, Dame and CJ had 15 or less each in that Denver game. And Melo yeah. had 20. So Melo and, and Hassan combined for 53, but that's not really Blazers basketball. That's really not how we're designed to win. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt. Um, and I think we need one of the, you know, we need one of the third options to spark in some of these more competitive games. But Dame and CJ have to, they got to combine for at least 40 somehow, Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, Hassan's been killing lately. He's been doing really well. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, you know, he is more of a stat stuffer in my yeah. opinion. But even so, like getting stats isn't easy. So uh, <laughs> there's a lot of times where it's frustrating to watch him on defense, and he's he's not really hustling for offensive or defensive rebounds. Sometimes, I mean, obviously he gets plenty of rebounds. Uh, but there there's certain times where you're like, man, like this is a this is a key possession. You need to go for that rebound a little more aggressively, you know. Uh, but that's that's easy for me to say, obviously. Um, well, what's up with this? The last game we I forgot to, I skipped Christian is what did you see in this OKC game that stuck out to you? I'm seeing that Dennis Schroeder had 21 points. Yeah, it didn't feel like that. I mean, I watched the game. It, I can tell you what, as an ASU graduate, Mr. Dort, D-O-R-T, huge, huge dude. I think he's a, I don't know if he's a two or a three for OKC. They were like, this guy is huge. He's like built like a refrigerator. He's physical. 
And he was just taking people out. It was so funny to watch. I think he's number... Let me tell you. Number five. Let me get his first. Lou Jens Dort. Yeah, he's 6'3", 216 pounds. Okay. I think I saw him like just completely roll over like CJ or something like that. Um, but that was interesting to watch. Um, I still I, I still want to find out how many threes Dame had against the Knicks. He had eight. He was eight for twelve. Damn. Yeah. I mean, he was on fire, and they just took yeah. him out because they didn't like they like like everyone's saying we didn't we don't need another injury, right? That's for sure. So, yeah, uh, that was my crappy recap of those four games. Um, I'm having the hardest time finding comprehensive box scores right now. We are uh, back. We had technical difficulties. Uh, who knows why, but here we are. So, a couple things. First off, that Lakers game, uh, obviously it sucked. I was at that Lakers game. It's so annoying to have so many bandwagon Lakers fans in there. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, just so many Lakers fans in the Moda Center, and I just wanted to punch everyone. No, I'm not going to punch anyone. I'm a nice person. So, the... Blazers, uh, during that game, that game was like the most frustrating thing ever, just just period, like to be at involving the Blazers, involving basketball. Something else happened that night that made me almost as frustrated, and it had nothing to do with the Blazers. Chris Paul was against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Thunder were against the Timberwolves. Chris Paul, <laughs> there's one second left in the game. Oh, the Jersey. Timberwolves are up two. Carl Anthony Towns is taking free throws. Jordan Bell walks in the game. Chris Paul looks at him, points, says, his jersey's untucked. That's a delay of game. Scott Foster, who's just the best ref ever. We love him. He uh, calls a technical foul, which is like letter of the law, sure, maybe. Okay? It's the second delay of game, so it's a technical foul. Thunder, go, shoot a free throw. Then there's just the craziest uh, full-court pass from... Steven Adams, I think, to Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder gets a layup with that one second left, goes to overtime, Thunder win the game. That's a game that the Thunder had, had no reason to win. They're Like, not no reason. They should not have won that game. And then Chris Paul points at a dude and says, his jersey's untucked as the guy's, like, getting in the game, tucking in his jersey, and calls a delay a game. Literally, he's not delaying anything, okay? Chris Paul is standing there uh, in, the, in the key. Another Thunder player is walking across the key at that exact moment. So no one's taking a free throw at that time. People are moving around. One of Chris Paul's own teammates is blocking the player and the basket. He's in the key at that point. There's mm -hmm. nothing being delayed. So letter of the law, sure, maybe. But it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen, and I was so frustrated. That's an entire NBA game that's just taken away because Chris Paul points at a guy. It's I was extremely and, 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 unhappy about you that. Know, it's, if it it's weren't just, for the Lakers game, I'd have been just, oh, man. It's one of those things where it's like, no, that's fine if you want to call that. Um, but just make sure that it's, you know, and I can completely understand if, if people are just in general like, look, that's a dumb rule. Um, but some just need to be there just because. Um, and that's that was dumb. Let me be clear about that. That was stupid. And it's stupid because... I can't tell you any other game as of late um, that I've even seen that called in the first or second or third quarter, mm -hmm. let alone the end of a fourth quarter. Now, like, if the ref is waiting to pass the ball to the player to shoot the free throw, then maybe I could understand it. The ref is having to wait for someone to tuck their jersey. That's not the case, okay? You got people walking around in front of the shooter. Like, there's... Right. It was the most ridiculous thing ever, and that that is... An understatement. It was even yeah. more ridiculous than the most ridiculous thing ever. Oh, no. it's just as uh, ridiculous that that that. What game was CP3 at that Melo was playing in? Was it against? Was it the Lakers game? Was it the uh, Lakers he game? He was at the Nuggets game. He was in Denver Nuggets watching game. the right. Nuggets. That's uh, right. Yeah, and then only Von Miller I... was there, and Damon him switched jerseys, right. signed him. Yeah, that's right. Only the only reason I thought it was Lakers was because of Banana Boat, but. Um, no, that makes sense. Uh, that was ridiculous as well. I think Brandon Goldner had tweeted something about, you know, why is ESPN really giving like all this airtime to Chris Paul just sitting on the side? But you know what it, you know, you know what it is. It just I know it, exactly. It just, what it is. Exactly. Yeah. So it's nothing that we're a stranger to as Portland fans. But um, 
In the Blazers yeah. game against the Thunder, Chris Paul also pointed to Carmelo, who was like, I don't remember what he was doing, like clapping or putting his hands up uh, after a no call. It was after yeah. a no call, I think. And then Chris Paul pointed at him, and then Carmelo got a tech. And it was like, oh my gosh, more of this Chris Paul. And then later on in that same game, I think, Chris Paul had a delay of game or something like that, and the ref called him on a delay of game. I don't, I don't even think it was a technical. But he said, like, oh, you're just trying to prove a point or something like that. And it's like, yeah, you're trying to prove a point? Are you kidding me? Like, what the heck is... <sighs> I'm, I'm, I cannot stand Chris, Chris Paul. Chris Paul is a piece of work, yeah. And I, I'm right there with you. Um, well, before we get to uh, any more doom and gloom, let's talk about opportunities, Christian. Let's talk about positive things here. here we go. So... What are we? What are we thinking? I mean, obviously, some of the bigger ones that we've heard are, um, and something that's okay. The two biggest ones are uh, Danilo Gallinari for the Thunder, and then uh, Kevin Love. Those are the two biggest ones that we've heard. Kenneth Fareed it was released by his uh, team in China, so I think he'll probably end up somewhere. Um, we're not sure if it'll be Portland, but um, you know, and then. One that has kind of came and went, which I still think is a, a fantastic opportunity, is the uh, Iggy and Crowder trade. Um, and and all of this is very – let me just preface all of this here for our uh, audience. Um, I don't really know too much about the financial implications of the trade market uh, and really the NBA as a whole. Christian knows a lot more about the financial side of this. Um, so when I'm, when I'm speaking about these, it's, it's purely from a performance and fit standpoint – um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about maybe some of those implications. Uh, and then there was a Blazer's Edge article. Let me go ahead and make sure I give credit where credit is due um, regarding three trade targets or kind of under the radar trade targets, three modest trade targets worthy of Blazer's attention by Mr. Steve DeWald. And he had mentioned uh, DJ Wilson for the Bucks, Justin Jackson for the Mavs, who I liked even come out of college. And then um, a real kind of hot topic as of late being uh, an ex or an arch nemesis, uh, Mr. Tory Craig for the Denver Nuggets. Um, I don't know why is, they'd want to get rid of him. Well, it sounds like from what I've heard, and I'm not even – let me see if I can find his minutes average uh, in the last two seasons. Does he not get but, the playing time he wants? Uh, yeah, well, it sounds like he's like really kind of even just out of the rotation, rotation at this point. Um let me get the hard, cold, hard facts. And in the meantime, you want to give your uh, two cents on, on those options there, Christian? Yes. So with this disabled player exception, the Blazers have like $2 million to get another player, hopefully. So I want them to get Kenneth Fareed. Kenneth Fareed will be a guy who can go hard after offensive and defensive rebounds. Uh, just an energy guy who can um, keep the pace moving. Uh, he's He's not like some savior for the Blazers or anything. And, they can and use salary that wise, depth. salary wise, he fits well for that use, right? That, that kind of ex, ex, exempt, is it ex, is exception ex, or exemption? Exception. They're exception. Making an so, exception to the roster. No, of none that. of these other guys we've mentioned would really fit that $2 million one year budget, right? Well, I mean, you, you have to pick up a free agent. So pretty much anyone that is a free agent right now, would be open to it because currently they're not making any yeah, money. Right. Um, right, right, right. I mean, you know, I'm sure there's ways people are making money that I don't know of. But uh, to me, it's like Kenneth Fareed and then also maybe like Dante Cunningham. I'd pointed out a few maybe on Twitter before, like uh, Luke Mba Amute. I don't know how to say his name. Luke Mba, uh, Luke Mba Amute. Yes. Uh, but yeah, just some, some like long, small forward, power forward guys who have had decent stats within the last couple of years and just for some reason aren't, aren't in the league right now. When the Rockets lost Ariza and Baamute, I don't know how to say his name. Okay, I'm just gonna no, keep saying it. Uh, when they lost both of them, they struggled defensively. So I could, I would like to have him on the team, but Dante Cunningham had decent stats recently and Kenneth Fareed, um, just eye test. He's just a guy you want on your team. He's a guy who puts in energy. So uh, Kenneth Fareed, okay, seriously, when I saw the Denver Nuggets, Kenneth Fareed was so short compared to what you'd think. Like, he's, like, as tall as Will Barton, mm -hmm. and he's probably, like, 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, so he's he's not that big, but he's an energy right. guy. Um, now, as far as trades, so I want them to get someone like that for depth regardless, okay? Mm -hmm. As far as trades go, today is December 15th. It is the first day that the Blazers can trade Mario Hazonia, Anthony Tolliver. 
Um, those aren't like deal breakers in a deal, but it might help with um, salary or to put something over the top where they're like, oh, we could use someone this season. Maybe someone says that. Um, maybe you make a trade with the Timberwolves and they like Tolliver and they want him back or with the Pistons and they like Tolliver and they want him back, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as far as trades go, I'm shooting for the moon here because I want it, you know? So the Blazers need to make a trade. We, I've talked about this before. You can disagree with me if you want, but the Blazers are going to lose $46 million in salary next year if they don't make a trade. Hassan Whiteside and, why, and Kent why Bazemore. Is that? Hassan Whiteside's making $27 million. Kent Bazemore's making $19 million. If you trade those now for deals that are not expiring, then you're going to continue to have players on your team that are worth that much money, worth that much. Uh, if you lose them, you're going to have around $10 million in cap space. Now, maybe you disagree with me, but you can't do much with $10 million in cap space. And this team right here is struggling already. And this team plus minus two plus one $10 million player isn't going to do a whole lot. So to me, you you need to try to get at least one or two players that are going to be on the team for the next uh, year or two after this one. Um, so for me, here are my ideal trade targets, and I'll talk about what I'd be willing to give up. Um, so ideally, I don't, I don't, I have no clue what the San Antonio Spurs want to do, but trading Hassan Whiteside and Kent Bazemore for DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge. Aldridge is on the team next year as well. DeRozan has a player option for next year. So it's possible if you were to somehow do this trade, I'm not saying the Spurs want to, um, if you were to do that trade, that DeRozan and Hood would both decline their player options and we'd have no small forward, basically. Um, so there's risk involved, for sure. Uh, what, 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 how, how would you entice the Spurs to take that? So to me, it is, um, I mean, ideally, <laughs> straight up, that would be great. But I'd be willing, uh, to, me personally, I would prefer to give up one or two first-round picks, and I'm on the fence on if I'd include Zach Collins. Like, Maybe one pick in Zach Collins. I don't know about two picks in Zach Collins. Um, I don't want to give up Anthony Simons or Nasir Little, like, no matter what. I need to get a star that's going to be on the team for three or four years and is in their prime if we're going to give up one of those guys, probably. Uh, so Ship, ship Zach Collins. For, if you end up with DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge, then, yeah, ship Zach Collins. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to have all that much defense, uh, but... The Blazers don't already, so it's not going to be all that different. Um, I, I would love to keep Zach Collins on the team. Zach Collins is awesome. Uh, I Just because of the injury and because we'd be trading for a big man, I would prefer <laughs> to keep Nasir Little and Anthony Simons. Um, dude, their alley-oop they had a few games ago was just awesome. So cool, that Orlando connection. Um, so that's I, just, ideal. I just don't see I don't see the Spurs getting rid of both of those both they, of those they've guys. talked to the Heat about trading one or one or both of them. Uh, well, so, well, they also want to. Don't they want to be on a contender? Didn't I hear Lamarcus want to be on a contender or something like that? Lamarcus are, already said he wants to go back to the Blazers at some point. So, and Kevin Love said, like, I don't know what he's saying or what his agent saying or what people are making up, but Kevin Love supposedly so he wanted said, to be on a contender. I want to be on a contender. Then the next day he said, I want to be on the Blazers. So. <laughs> Maybe contending next year. Which, yeah, which maybe, maybe contending this year. If they ways, I, guess. Quick enough. I mean, they can still make the playoffs if they can avoid uh, the Lakers or Clippers in the first round. Maybe they get enough momentum to be able to take them down in the second. Who knows? Uh, not that likely, though. Uh, so next, that was the first ideal. My second ideal scenario, which, again, I don't think is all that realistic, but it's possible. Whiteside and Kent for Kevin Love and Kent for LaMarcus Aldridge. Okay? So you get two big men who do different things. LaMarcus, uh, I mean, yeah, they do different things. Uh, And you get basically two chances at it. I mean, if Love gets injured again, which is the big concern, um, then you still have Aldridge. You still have a little bit of depth. Um, If you have both of them, then the starting center position isn't a question because getting rid of Whiteside obviously leaves a hole there, even if it's going to be fine once Nurkic... How does that, how does that work when, when Yusef comes back, though? It's because one... It's, uh, LA, LA or K-Love would have to come off the bench, yeah, right? It's, it's probably going to be Aldridge. Um, and it, yeah. it's probably at the start, Nurk comes off the bench to, to start, like the first few games. But then it's probably going to be Aldridge going to the bench um, in this yeah. crazy hypothetical. Um, 
so yeah, that that's my next ideal because you get two players for at least this and next year, um, and they fill a huge need. Um, it's not ideal to have three good big men, but you know, there's Aldridge is three years older than Love, so everyone's there, there's a lot of people who are really high on Aldridge and really low on Love because of Love's injury risk. But Aldridge is 34 already. Love's just 31. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's significant risk in either move. That's for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. So next uh, in line, if if we can't get Love and Aldridge, which I don't expect we will, uh, white side for Griffin, straight up. Uh, probably just keep Kent Bazemore. <laughs> but Blake Griffin is like the number one trade target for me for what he individually can do for the Blazers. I think he would be just awesome on the Blazers. So fun to throw up maybe a couple lobs to him, but for the most part, um, he's not focused on that athletic part of his game anymore, and he's yeah. developed in so many other ways. Yeah. So Whiteside for Blake Griffin would be next um, in what's ideal. And then after that is white si- just Whiteside for Aldridge or Whiteside for Love. I'd, I'd take Whiteside for Griffin over either I'd be, two. But... I'd be shocked if we didn't end up making any moves. Right, I think I think that's how most people are feeling right now. Yeah, and with what you were saying about salary, uh, it's the the Blazers don't have that much cap space. They're gonna be in the tax like no matter what. What's the cap yeah. right now? What's the current cap? The cap is one oh nine, and that's the thing is in a year is projected cap keeps on going down, and on top of that, like projected cap was going down back in September. They're like, it's going to be less than we had anticipated. And there's been relatively poor TV ratings. So And the whole China fiasco, which I know that they had discussed, like if, if China earlier when it was really tense, they had said uh, if China just completely uh, erased all of their contracts, TV contracts and whatnot and endorsements, uh, then because of the cap, uh, because of the effect on the cap, players like, and they had used Clay Thompson as an example, would have to be making like two to four million dollars less a year or something like that. So it's like there's very real implications for very, you know, various other international, not just not just how the ratings are doing domestically, but also internationally. So, and then it sounds like maybe they're also uh, discussing doing a 78 game season or something. Did you see that? The how many games? 78 game seasons. Mm. They were talking about they were talking about short because of the the ratings being down. They were talking about shortening the season by like four to six games. You didn't hear yeah. anything about that. I didn't hear that. No. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll find something. But for I've you. I've heard quite a bit of talk on uh, potential for changes in the NBA, which makes me really excited to talk for our New Year's episode, whenever that is, right before, right after New Year's. Talk NBA 2030, what we, we predict will change in the league. That's I live for that, man. I'm stoked to talk about that. If anyone wants to come on and talk with us, let me know. Um, Let's do it. But yeah, so the, the NBA uh, cap, it in 15-16, it was at $70 million. It jumped up to $94 million, and then they anticipated it's going to keep jumping. It's going to be insane, and that's why Neil Olshe spent buku bucks in 2016. Um, so 2016-17, yeah, jumped up to $94 million, $24 million change. Then it went up $5 million, then it went up $3 million, then now this year it went up $8 million. It's projected to go up another $7 million. I don't think it's going to go that high. So oh. the Blazers are going to have between, like, probably between 9 to... 15 million in cap space and they're not getting much more after that because Damon CJ's contracts just get bigger okay so um it's not like there's it they're just going to keep on dropping off certain players and they're going to have more and more cap space no right. they're, they're going to be pretty much locked in at if they sign one player for 10 or maybe up to 15 million this offseason they're stuck with him and that's the team yeah. and then you're going to have to pay Simons you're going to have to pay Little you're going to have to pay Collins if he's still on the team all that so uh, the Blazers cap situation, it's basically, well, you paid Dame, you paid CJ, so you're all in on spending money. You're going to be in the tax. You're going to be putting all this money in there. So you may as well go all out and go to really contend. Um, so I'm not I'm not for this, you know, just let the salaries go off and then bring in a new player in the offseason because it's not going to be a I think if, if the Blazers don't get to the Western Conference Finals – Next year, just get there, not necessarily win it. CJ's out the door. Yeah, yeah. 
I, and I'm I, not even saying I'm not even saying I necessarily want that. I don't think. I mean, obviously, on a, on but a very you got to do like, something. If, yeah, like I, yeah. I, this team right now is the number one or number two. I've seen different numbers uh, in uh, salary this year, and okay. it's only going to get worse. Especially if you do make these trades. If you don't make these trades, your your team's not going to be. Well, like you said, you don't. You it'll don't be good. Really have another choice. You don't really have another choice after you made that decision with Damon and CJ, right? Yeah. So the only other option to do to do anything is to alter one of those pieces, and yeah. you're not going to alter Dame. So I, I, even I, even though even though we were burned by CJ on Twitter, and um, you know this, it's very easy to sit back and and be a, a, a kind of a in the stands fan, uh, in the stands GM, if you will. Like, don't get me wrong. I love C.J. McCollum's game. I really like what he does for the Portland Trailblazers. That being said, all things considered, he will be gone if they don't get to the Western Con- Western Conference Finals next year. And Probably. if they don't, if they don't, it's going to be another big Neil Olshay backlash. I yeah, can and, tell and that. Neil Olshay is almost lucky that there's so many injuries on this team this year because there were such high expectations. So. If those expectations weren't met, I have a feeling that uh, Jody Allen would have done something about it. Um, but because of the injuries, he has an excuse, and it's a totally valid excuse, and I, I can't say for sure. I, I think this team would have been awesome um, had there not been Zach Collins' injury and then everything since. So, um, yeah, I, I think that he's kind of, in some ways, for his job security, a little lucky for this season that there were injuries. That might be a weird thing to say, but no, no, um, no, no. I get what you're saying, and I think it's valid. Yeah. I so, think it's valid. Um, yeah. I mean, within the next couple of years, it's like this. This team has to contend. Um, there's no other option. And so, you've already discussed what your options or what your ideal scenarios are mm-hmm. with just a talent and fit. What in your mind is the best financial value? that type of moves that we can make as a franchise right now? That is a fascinating question. Obviously, Um, I I would, I would, to to answer my own question to start, I would say taking advantage of that uh, exemption first and foremost, or exception, I'm not going to get that straight. Um, And, and because like you said, free agents, they're free agents. And mm -hmm. if you have the money, it's free money. I mean, and technically Rodney's like, does, is Rodney even taking up a, a, a formal roster spot any longer if, if they're able to indulge in that exception? I'm not sure how that works, but I mean, yeah. the Blazers are going to be in the tax regardless. So as far as financially, if you're really trying to save money, literally the only thing that's going to move the needle is trading CJ. So, I, I mean, yeah. Dame, Dame is locked in. Dame, Dame is the centerpiece of the franchise. You're if you do Damian Lillard wrong, no one's ever coming to the Blazers again because you're like, wow, they did him dirty, you know. So CJ McCollum is basically the only option. I mean, you you could uh, if you really want to get right financially, trade CJ for someone who's pretty good or something, or is on an expiring deal and let Hassan Whiteside and Kent Bazemore contracts go out, and then maybe in a couple years, Dame, uh, Simons, Little, Collins, Nurkic can contend. Uh, with with some other pieces around him, but financially, I mean, you're gonna be you're gonna be paying tax pretty much no matter what. Can you and if imagine you're not, if the team's gonna suck? Can you imagine if he did that though? I don't think that Neil would do that at yeah, this time. I don't, I don't think. He, I, I mean, Neil loves CJ McCollum. I love CJ McCollum. He's awesome. Uh, I don't see it happening. I don't think Damon CJ is the best fit in the league. Obviously. Um, Obviously, it can work. It can work well. I mean, you saw in the Nuggets series, like Thunder series was all Dame. Nuggets series was all McCollum. And it worked because yeah. Dame drew the doubles. CJ was able to work with it. Um, yeah. So it, it works. It's not the most ideal fit. Um, I, was, I, was, I said recently, if you were going to trade CJ, this year is definitely not the year. If there was a time, it was last year for Anthony Davis. There's no other superstars that will move the needle that much for the Blazers that are available this year to make it worth it at all. Um, now, if maybe a year or two from now, uh, Paul George is disgruntled or Kawhi Leonard's disgruntled, and you, you can, you know, make a trade for one of those guys. Yeah, uh, I'm, I mean, I'd be for it. Those guys are... You need a big defender like that in order to seriously contend. I mean, it, well, it's but definitely like, what possible, if, but... what if? What if... I mean, I, get, I hear what you're saying in terms of... 
in terms of a superstar that is known to be on the market, but what about the guys who maybe aren't being touted as being on the market, but once their GM picks up the phone and they hear that CJ McCollum is on the table, you know, like, and, and then that, and then we get to retain the young talent and the draft picks and still get a superstar, you know? I mean, most of those players that are doing so well are their teams are doing well, and so there's no reason they'd want to mess it up. I mean, no, you're, Jimmy you're not, Butler's doing great on the friend. Heat. Onto the you're not call. hearing me, my friend. What, what if, what if, what if you called? What if Neil Olshay calls the Detroit Pistons and he said, "Look, I know you want a a, a young pick uh, plus Hassan plus Kent Bazemore. We'll give you either Has- we'll give you Bazemore and CJ. You're not getting Hassan, and you're not getting." Um, not getting any draft picks okay uh and but we want blake griffin all right so now you end up with dame blake griffin hassan gets to still fill that that uh that need up front while his while yusuf is coming back and then you don't sacrifice any of your young talent and you have draft picks for another move maybe down the line and you just freed up maybe some of cj's uh financial limitations that he imposes yeah um no. The, the the thing is, because of Whiteside and Bazemore's expiring contract, this year Blake Griffin isn't gonna give them a championship, especially if CJ isn't on the team. So yeah, it just it just doesn't make sense. Um, oh, if yeah. if you if you were to do that or something similar, and also get really good pieces in Whiteside and Bazemore trades, like get you know Lamarcus and DeRozan and get Blake Griffin or something, maybe it would be worth it. I I can't say for sure. Um, I, another team that. We, we've been uh, neglecting to talk about that has a couple pieces is uh, the Timberwolves in Covington and potentially Andrew Wiggins as far as players who are overpaid and they might want to get rid of. Um, Andrew Wiggins, I know he was doing really well to start the season. I haven't honestly been following him lately enough to know. Hopefully uh, drop back to earth a little bit so that Blazers might be able to trade for him. But um, Covington's like the ideal guy, but apparently Carl Anthony Towns just loves Robert Covington as a teammate. Um, didn't stop Neil O'Shea from not signing Ed Davis from da- uh, Damien's mm-hmm. affinity toward him. But uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I would love to have Covington on the team. If you can get Covington and Love or Covington and Aldridge, Covington and Blake Griffin, that's awesome. Uh, I just don't know that it could Covington really happen. and Blake Griffin would be uh, that's I mean, my ideal trade. That that would be ideal. I would love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I mean, maybe they do it for Baysmore and and a first or something. But so you're so you're not you're not really even considering the whole Crowder Iguodala thing. I know you're not a big Iguodala fan in this discussion. Well, it, I mean, Iguodala is awesome, but it just comes down to um, how much time is on their contract and like what difference is going to make because Iguodala is not going to put us over the top this year. Um, and as far as I can see, he only has one year left on his contract. So uh, him and Jay Crowder, I think, are both expiring. Let me check it out. Uh, but the, the thing is, like, you everyone's expecting, like, giving up picks for these. And if, if you're not getting them long term, there's no reason to give up a pick because this year is probably not the year at this point, you know? So, um, and I, I would prefer other guys. Andre Iguodala is known for his defense and athleticism. And guess what? He's only getting older. He's already 35. He's older yeah. than LaMarcus. He's older than Kevin Love. He's older than Blake Griffin. Uh, so on and so forth. Um, and who's to say he'd be all that motivated going to the Blazers? He was motivated and run... Not saying he's like actually like bad, but he was run into the ground with Golden State. He was on championship teams for five straight years. Yeah. That's a lot of miles to put on an NBA yeah. player. You know? I mean, yeah. look at all the rest of the stars in the uh, Warriors. Yeah. Kevin Durant's out for the season. Steph's basically out for the season. Clay's basically out for the season. It wears on you. Yeah. Um, so looking forward a little bit, I think uh, by the time our next episode comes around, the we'll only have two games to review. Uh, the first of which is going to be occurring tomorrow here in sunny Phoenix, Arizona, where I am based. Um, yeah. I, will not, I will not be uh, uh, able to check out the game this year as I am uh, – saving some funds to get into a new residence a little bit closer to my job and we'll be celebrating my uh my girlfriend's father's uh, birthday down there with them tomorrow evening but um i'm i'm i've been saying this for years but i think i'm actually going to get some floor seats next year uh when the blazers come to town i mean it's really only 
what's crazy is I was talking to some buddies down here about going to – they were trying to go to an Arizona Cardinals game. And mm-hmm. they said, oh, you know, pretty much, you know, anything that isn't a complete nosebleed. The nosebleeds were like 60 bucks yeah. for, for a cards game. And then anything that wasn't was like a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. And you're not even like on the 50-yard line. You're not even yeah. in the bowl. But, I mean, to be fair, there's a quarter or less – as many games as the NBA season. So supply and demand, there's not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, But like Seahawks tickets are worse than that. Seahawks are like definitely 100 plus. Like most games, it's like 200 something for like any ticket. Right. As far as I know, I've never even gone to a game because I'm just like, no, I'm just too expensive. Right. And you often the best seats in the house are just, you know, on your couch. Um, Whereas the Suns, I looked at floor seats. I'll look at them right now. I'll look at them right now again just to check. Um, tickets. The floor seats when I last checked were like four or five hundred bucks, which is like you know that's still a decent amount of money. But like you save up for a couple paychecks and and that's for the Blazers game too. I I am ninety percent sure. Let me confirm with you, my friend. Um, best seats. We'll just go one. Apply filters. Um, come on, come on, come on. There might not be. They're all kind of grayed out. No matching tickets. So they're all oversold now. Yeah. But even, let's just go, I'll go right underneath the hoop. Row two. Yeah, that's crazy. Right underneath the hoop. Um, the visitor side. Row two, guess how much? Mm, I don't know. Uh, you said, what? $112. What? That's insane. No one goes to Suns games, bro. No one goes to Suns. All right, games. I'm yeah. Next year, Blazers gonna, Suns. Come, I'm coming down. Yeah, come on down, buddy. I'll get you a, a little guest pass with uh, with Alaska Airlines, or you can just come down with Dan's yeah. Dan's oh, discount. Yeah. My brother's a yeah. flight attendant. As long as he's still working for them, I'll fly for free. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said. It's I'm looking at the tickets right now. It's cheap, man. Um, and Dude, then that's you know crazy. right. Right at half court, row four, 215. Gosh. Uh, yeah, like you can get floor seats for, you know, a couple hundred bucks. But, I mean, that's that's a once a year thing, you know. That's yeah. like that's like a that's like a birthday present to yourself or something, you know. Yeah, or if you have someone that really cares about you, a birthday present to you from someone else. Yeah. I need to find someone any, like anybody that. Anybody listening? <laughs> All right, man. Well, yeah, so what do you uh, – what do you, we'll just kind of talk about what we're expecting to see in the Suns game and uh, and and what we're expecting to see in the Warriors game on Wednesday, and then we can uh, kind of wrap it up. Um, it looks like we are only like two and a half games back from the eighth seed that the Suns are currently in. Mm-hmm. Um, let me confirm that here. So that would be that would be huge if the Blazers win that game. So I mean, the next few games: Suns, Warriors, Magic. Uh, Timberwolves are pretty tough, but some Suns, Warriors, Magic. You can win all three of those. You're still afloat. You're still in it in the Western Conference. Uh, obviously, uh, being the eighth seed in the playoffs probably just means you're losing to the Lakers right away. But you know, I'll I'll still take it over missing the playoffs altogether. Um, right. I don't want the Blazers to tank whatsoever. I still would prefer. You know, I talked about one or two podcasts ago. Just the. Uh, which picks I want the Blazers to trade. I want to keep the even number years, get rid of the odd number years if you're going to trade them. Because even number years, there's this year's draft, which the Blazers hopefully will... Hopefully. I'm not hoping that they're bad. But likely this this year they will be worse than they will be in the future if things go well and they can improve in the future years. Um, so that that's should be a better draft pick than next year. So... Keep the 2020 pick, and then in 2022, that's when there's potentially not going to be the one-and-done rule. So you should have a lot of really good first-year uh, college players going into the draft and also seniors in high school going into the draft. So mm-hmm. uh, if you're going to trade picks, hopefully trade the 2021 and or the 2023 pick. So, Man, I want to see a, I want to see a backcourt. With uh, come of our for our bench, I want to see Lamelo Ball and Anthony on the same backcourt. Yeah, that'd be wild. That'd be a pretty. Then, then that'd be a pretty. Then you're definitely trading CJ. <laughs> that'd be a pretty lengthy, uh, pretty lengthy backcourt, man. Young yeah, back I mean, Simon's court. six. He got up to six four to start this season. So I think I Lamelo is. Saying. How tall is Lamelo? He's pretty. He's pretty. Lengthy. He's like six seven. Yeah, maybe just he kind of he he had to have grown. 
Um, yeah, he's six seven, man. Six seven, yep. Yeah. yeah, he's the tallest of all three of them. Mm-hmm. So, I will uh, gladly take Lamelo Ball. Six seven shooting guards got crazy range. I mean, That's he's, unbelievable. I, I'm sure he'd play the point guard. I mean, yeah. bring him on the Blazers, have Dame off ball quite a bit. Obviously, not all the time, but um, get Dame open, get some catch and shoot threes. Not end game. I'll I'll take Dame with the ball in his hands. End game for sure. But yeah, that'd be nice. All right, Christian. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about this uh, this week, my friend? Nothing else. Uh, hopefully, by our next podcast, a significantly awesome trade has happened for the Blazers because yeah. it's December fifteenth, and they can trade Hazonia and Tolliver if they need to throw him in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hopefully, Fareed's on the team too. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Here's let me just put this disclaimer out here right Uh-oh. before we right before we wrap this up. The last like three or four episodes, it feels like we discuss something and then right after, like the next day, something happens. The last one was Rodney Hood, and I'm trying to remember. We what, were what, optimistic in our last episode. This could happen. They could turn it around. It was their yeah, first yeah, yeah. game with all five starters, and it worked. Yeah. Like, yeah, mm. and and I can't remember the 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 two events that had happened in the previous episodes. But usually, what happens is we drop an episode. And then something occurs here in the days following. So mark my words, it's December 15th, 2.04 p.m. right now. And if uh, if something happens, well, you know, we're... Hopefully, we're... hopefully it happens tomorrow after Neil Walshay has watched the episode and realized that going for Covington and Griffin or DeRozan and Aldridge is a must. Absolutely. Because he's probably, like, going to settle for, like, ah, oh, let's get Tristan Thompson and uh, Danilo Gallinari, and then they'll both <laughs> expire at the end of the year just like... Whiteside and Kent Bazemore, so uh, yeah. that'll help us. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody, go ahead and follow uh, follow us on Twitter and on uh, on Instagram. Like all our stuff, share it, tell your mom, your grandpa. It's the holidays. You're going to be around them. Wine as well. And uh, yeah, jingle bells, jingle bells. Listen to Peeps and Platt all the way. And uh, all I want for Christmas is for you to listen to us and give us your input. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, shout out to uh, Ziggy Zay and uh, Mashoni and, and all of our artists that, that contribute music. We're going to be doing kind of another uh, outreach here in the coming weeks and see if we can't get some new fresh content as well. Um, and go Blazers. Go 